What's up, gang? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Today we're gonna talk about the conflict of new ideals and old ideals. And the truth is in the foundational principles. First of all, I wanna say this. If you're gonna do battle with me in the comments, be factual. I have someone that actually firmly believes that if you had invested a thousand dollars in Dogecoin, you would have a hundred thousand dollars right now. Dogecoin started off at like something like nine cents and it hasn't crossed a dollar. For you to invest one thousand dollars and for Dogecoin to yield a hundred thousand dollars, Dogecoin would have had to go up ten dollars, player. And this, this is in line with what I'm, I'm talking about. Right now, it's become a religious-like atmosphere around cryptocurrency. And it's kind of like the story of your grandmother or your grandfather picked up a guy named Carl. And as each time the story was retold, you know, Carl became a millionaire because things were left out, things were added to the story. And that's where we are with cryptocurrency. Um, you've got people out there who literally believe that they could take $1,000 and turn it into six figures. Seriously, he, he, he's actually, because I mean, it is so, captivating what is going on right now. It is fantastical. However, I got a little chat with you, chat for you guys today. The conflict of new ideals versus old ideals. So I'm gonna talk about the storage auction business. And that, that was rooted in a very old ideal. You go to the auctions, you buy stuff, you resell the stuff you purchase at auctions for a profit. And I became really good at that. Now, that at the time was the only ideal that I knew. And it was working and it was making me money. So I clung to it. Then I got pushed out of it and I came to the internet where I was introduced to new ideals. I became a millionaire in not one, not two, but three years. Something that I didn't know was possible. I did not know that you could become a millionaire in three years. This was a new ideal. And one of the things I've been trying to do, and, and I haven't been doing a really good job of it, is I've been trying to indoctrinate you in the old narrative and the new narrative, and it just simply is not going to work because here's the old narrative. You start a business, you work hard, 20, 30 years, you're a millionaire. Nobody wants to hear that. No one's listening to that. Now, the narrative of me becoming a millionaire in three years because uh, I've been, you know, mulling starting a new men's channel and I want to be effective, but I also want to make videos that people watch. And, you know, it, when I come up here and I talk about hard work, doing the right thing, making good decisions, that is a very old ideal school. People are like, I, I'm not trying to listen to that when I know that there is a bunch of new ideals out here. I have been the product of the new ideals. And I was in the old ideal paradigm for so long that it's kind of hard. Cause like, like I said, <clears throat> I understand you guys want to get money. I understand you guys want to get money quickly. And this puts me 
in a crosshair because you're you're being you're getting information from many many different sources and me coming up here talking about old school ideals which are foundational which are fundamental i will explain in a minute is not being heard because give you an example i can come up here and make a video how i bought my first house at 54. that video ain't gonna do well it's just not now if i did a video when i was 18 how i bought my first house at 18 that video would blow up because the expectation is at the age of 54 i should have my stuff together but at 18 it's like how did you do that tell me tell me what strange witchcraft this is i want to practice this witchcraft so essentially when you have the conflict like 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 i said uh the girl who bought her house here is something that i think is getting lost in the mix there are exceptional people and i really <clears throat> evaluate <clears throat> evaluate this girl she has a youtube channel that has blown up she has a TikTok channel that has blown up and she has an e-commerce business that blown up. That is not an accident. So this girl, even though she's young, she's exceptional. She is exceptional. And that is where I think the conflict of the new ideals and the old ideals has a problem. When you come across someone who's exceptional, whether they're operating on the old economy or the new economy, they're going to be successful. They're going to be successful. And what you're seeing is these people who are exceptional put out content and they make it look easy. They make it look so easy and in your mind like the whole thing with cryptocurrency you buy it it booms that's easy you've done nothing you've done no work you haven't had to learn how to market sell advertise you, you've done nothing so that new ideal is very very attractive it is very 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 attractive uh, there is an example of the new ideal because essentially it's going to get to a point where the average person, well, Bitcoin is already there. The average person cannot buy a full Bitcoin. Uh, I think it's like $58,000, $60,000 per coin. And what people are trying to do is catch lightning twice. They're waiting on the next cryptocurrency coin that's going to explode like Bitcoin did. That's what they're trying to do. That's what they're looking for. Because new ideals conflict with old ideals. Why are you going to go out and go to college, get a four year degree and work 30 years to retire? That is a very old school ideal and is an ideal that many millennials were rejecting even before the pandemic they were rejecting this ideal and now based upon you know I, I will double down with the current informational marketplace there is no reason for you to be poor if you live in the United States of America you may not be rich, but you don't have to be poor. And what, what do I mean when I say there is no reason for you to be poor? I feel based on the information that is out there that you don't have to pay for, that the average person can make 70 
to 100K a year from internet information, the average person. And 70 to 100K a year ain't poor. I believe that it's attainable. I believe that it's possible. Um, yeah, I believe that. And why do I believe that? I went from $62,000 a year to $1.5 million a year in three years due to the internet. It was the internet. It was the internet. Now, granted, I had some sales and marketing skills before I came to the internet, but let's go back to this girl. Uh, she doesn't make as much money as I do yet because I think she's going to get there. And she did this in one. She got to where she came up with $70,000 she had in the bank one year. She did that in one year. And she candidly admitted her first year of dropping shipping, she made no money, she lost money. So in two years, she went from nothing to uh, about three years, she went from nothing to a thousand bucks a day. Between YouTube, her TikTok, her drop shipping stores. And she ain't 20 years old. And here's someone that is going to be a product of the new economy. The way that she's going, um, she's probably going to be able to put hundred, two hundred thousand dollars a year away in investments. And by the time she's 30, she should be sitting on eight or maybe 10 million by the time she's 30. This is a product of the new economy. But once again, we got to remember she ain't normal. And this is where the conflict happens. You have normal people who are looking at exceptional people who appear normal. You, you know, she does her videos, she looks normal, but she ain't normal. And this is where things start to get funny. Look at the guy who spent $180,000 on Dogecoin. It isn't the fact that he spent $180,000 on Dogecoin and became a millionaire. The most remarkable part of that story is he had $180,000. See, the foundational principles don't change. Um, I'm getting ready to do a reaction video for Savage Finance about fire. There's this girl, title of her video, retiring eight years. She's 31 years old. She's been working for 11 years already. It should be retire in 19, 20 years, which is really fast. But it doesn't sound as good as eight years. Um, there's a lot of double talk, clickbait, and half-truths and misinformation in the financial community. There's a lot of it. But in this conflict, because I'm a product of both schools, the new ideals, and, you know, I I'll be honest. I've asked myself several times about this car business. Is this something you want to do? Because this takes me back to the old economy. I mean, I've made 1500 bucks in two weeks off of like the four cars that are consistently rented on hire car. They have not one has come back. And then I've had some rentals on Turo. So now I, I will include the repairs. And also I will include since I'm still spending and growing the business, there is not a profit. I am still in the red, but I've asked myself, what can I bring to this new, this old business with the new economy? And since I'm an internet kid, I, 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 I can claim my internet kid card from having a YouTube channel for 12 years. I can claim that. And 
one of the things that is really hard. I understand you guys want your success yesterday. And when I am telling you something that's going to, that's going to be hard, that's going to take time, and you're bombarded with all these messages, nope, you don't have to do that. You can invest your money in this digital imagination. Imagine, you know, cryptocurrency is an imaginational currency. You can't touch it. You can't feel it. It is just digital code. It is like the image on your computer screen. That's what it is. And if you can invest in this phantom currency, your life could change. Now, for everyone who got into Bitcoin, Eurythium early, and it ain't that many people who got in early. Um, it's true. I mean, when I bought my Bitcoin, it was something like 80 cents. And, you know, to be honest, I wish I had bought 5,000 coins back then. It held on to them. But I didn't. I just spent a little money, bought a few coins to see what would happen. Didn't know this was going to happen. And this is another thing with new ideals conflicting with old ideals. Because the new ideals are built upon the old ideals. Like this thing, retiring early. If you have a high income and you have the knowledge, you can retire in 10 to 15 years. This is a relatively new ideal, but it can happen. Now, here is where things start to fall apart. Um, there's this girl and she did a very real video. She's 38 years old and her fire number is 750,000 and it's going to take her 17 years to get there, which means that she will be older than I'm currently older am when she retires. She'll be 55 when she's able to retire. This is a more realistic snapshot of the fire movement. Because she's 38, she has been working for, let's say 20. She's been working, let's say 18 years. So it's gonna take her 35 years to retire early, which is still earlier than being in her 60s. She'll retire 13, 14 years earlier than if she retired in her 60s. And there's been a lot of studies that the older you get, depending upon your, intest your intest intestinal fortitude, the less stress you can deal with. There are many stories of people retiring when they were 68 and they died two, three, four years later. And you got someone like Warren Buffett Charlie Munger, Charlie Munger is 97 years old and Warren Buffett is 90 years old. And they are running one of the largest businesses in the world. And they still going. The Koch brothers, old guys running multiple, multiple billion dollar businesses. So I feel that if you're doing something that you want to do, that is way less stressful than doing something that you don't want to do. And I, I really will maybe do a video diving in on why this happens. But essentially, the new ideal of retiring early with the right information and the right application of the information is a very real thing. Let's look at me. Let's say I didn't want to, I wasn't who I am. And let's say in 2011, 12, when I made that 1.5 million, I threw it all in the market. Uh, that would probably be 10, $12 million right now. I could have 
really retired on fat fire. But be honest, I didn't know about fire. I didn't know, I like, I really did understand a lot of stuff about business. I didn't even learn about business until I was 34. So if you are in the position of this girl who learned before she was 20, start a business, invest your money. I mean, she got this information 16 years before I got the information. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. So let's say I took that 1.5 million, didn't pay taxes, invested it, worked out some kind of payment plan with the Internal Revenue Service and invested that money. Didn't do YouTube videos. Guess what? My lifestyle would be exactly the same. It would be exactly the same. Because here's the conflict. I started an internet business, I created a product and I sold it and I made a lot of money really, really, really fast. I never made that kind of money in the storage auction business. And it transformed me. It created a new, uh, Um, it created a new mental shift to the point, I'll, I'll be honest with you, there was no way you could get me back into physical products. I'm like, I am the, I am the factory of my product? And I, the internet is my distribution system? There ain't no way. I mean, it was just, you know, when I created The Art of Holding, the Fast Business Boot Camp, I felt that this was a good thing to do. And the more I get into it, the more I realize it, it's, a, it's an amazing thing to do because what I'm going to do is bring the new ideals to the old ideals. And I'm getting ready to start running some test ads right now. So, when you have a conflict of ideals, people are going to pick the easier ideal. This is why the state of Montana, the state of South Carolina, they're seriously are going to cut unemployment off because people are not working. Um, that is fantastical to me that you would rather stay at home and get a check well, it shouldn't be fantastical to me. Because um, that's human nature to take the path of least resistance. That's just human nature. And um, I should have known or had an inkling of what, well, actually I did predict what was gonna happen in my live streams. I did predict what was gonna happen. It's like when you give people more money than they were making when they were working, they ain't going back to work. Ain't going back to work. And to City Slicker, I know you're watching. Let's talk about City Slicker, because I've deleted his comments. This dude has a YouTube channel talking about frugal living. Now, you know my thoughts on frugal living. Frugal living is invested, is a, a product of not having any money. That's frugal living. So, now all of a sudden, He's on the crypto, he's embraced these new ideals. Now, embracing the new ideals and really realizing benefit from new ideals are two different things. Like this person who is hell bent that if you invested $1,000 in Dogecoin, you have 100K right now, even though that is functionally untrue. And City Slicker keeps, because essentially, um, my personality is this kind of personality. People really like me or they really don't like me. And I'm cool with that. I ain't for everybody. And apparently I have pushed some buttons in this clown. Because right now I have a bunch of broke people. Let's be really clear. Broke. Don't have no money. Don't have no assets. Trying to tell a millionaire what he should do to make money. The amenable God, 
You broke. If you knew how to make money, wouldn't you have some? That is one of the things that every day I see it in the comments. Well, Glennon, you should do this. Well, you should buy some cryptocurrency. You should do this. You should do this. You should do this. Now, here's what's funny. Many of the people who are making these recommendations are not participating in the market because they're scared. And I, I'm going to say that's a healthy fear because you have no idea what cryptocurrency is going to do. It can be up. It can be down. It can be up. It can be down. And if you only have a few precious dollars, I would be like the guy who spent 180,000 $180, on Dogecoin. That was all the money he had. He won. His decision bore out. Hopefully he sells and takes those profits before they evaporate. But when you have people who are in these two trains of thought, in this um, serious, serious thought process of embracing new ideals and ignoring old ideals, because that's pretty much where we are. I can sit here and like tell you what you can do. And in the comment the other day, it was like, if I have the option to not have to work that hard and I can get the same benefit, why wouldn't I? And that's a great question. Like, I'm gonna be straight up with you. I did not know, because my first time in the stock market, I got out because I wasn't making money in the stock market. Um, my contributions were so high, which is why my portfolio was growing so quickly. But if I knew what I know now, I would have left that money where it was. This is knowledge. If I had known that I could have took that 1.5 million and threw it in the market, and that would have turned into 10 million, I would have left it there. I would have put it in there, but I didn't know. And th this is where you guys are so fortunate. You guys are so fortunate that you're getting all of this information at a early age. Fortunately for me, I kept building businesses and it worked out for me. Don't cry me. Don't, 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 don't pull out the little violins. I'm good. But what we're going to start doing is talking about how to decipher what is real and what is BS. There was a guy and once again, he crunched the numbers. He's like, I know this guy, he makes $40,000. He's a millionaire. I'm just like, See, when you when you start crunching numbers and this is how I knew that investing a thousand dollars in Dogecoin, which has not breached a dollar. If you had invested in Dogecoin when it was like nine cents and it goes up to a dollar, you would have made a 91 cent profit. It hasn't even gotten there yet. I don't know if it ever will. I don't know. But here's the thing. In this world of new ideals and these examples of exceptional people, the truth gets lost. If you're making $40,000 a year, that means that you have $3,000 and 200 to 600, like 30, let's say $3,500 per month. Get to a million dollars in assets, you, be, you need to be investing $1,500 to $2,000 a month. You're making $3,500. Uh, there are very few people who can make $3,500, invest $1,500, and live on two. There are very few people who can do that. You want to know why? Average rent is $1,200 to $1,500 in the United States of America. That right there. And then unless you live in a home with your parents, like a, a child, it's gonna be hard for you to do that. 
But one of the things that I consistently see is anyone on YouTube who didn't get picked, if you get picked, that, that you don't have to do nothing special. But out of all of these people who are exceptional, who are running businesses, who have social media presence, they make it look easy. And this is where in your monkey brain, you like, I can do that too. Right now, there are a number of hardworking black business YouTubers talking about trucking, talking about Turo, talking about all these business things. And the vast majority of them don't even have a thousand subscribers. Once again, my theory is the YouTube algorithm was created by white people, Indian people and Asian people. This is why we need more black folks in STEM to affect and impact these algorithms. Because I don't think that this was a mistake that the algorithm will usually pick some nondescript, plain, at times boring white person to push. I don't think this is an accident. It's was it diabolically intentional? I don't think it was that either. But it was the hidden biases of these product developers that creeps into the final product. Because I see this all the time. I see it all the time. There's so many black YouTubers talking about trucking. There's this guy named Toe Piglet. And he does hot shot trucking. His channel blew up. There's this white guy. And I kind of see the appeal because he's got a wife with big boobs and she's blonde with long hair. And when he figured he put her in the thumbnails, he would get views. He started pushing and he's got a nice family life. This channel makes like ten, twelve thousand dollars a month. And he just talking about trucking and load boards and stuff like that in his family life. Ten, twelve thousand dollars a month. I don't think that's an accident because. How many black YouTube channels are out there about trucking? Several, several, and they don't get the love. They just don't get the love. So I think this is institutional racism at the highest level because this is the internet. Now I'm going to tell you before YouTube created this algorithm thing, I slipped under the radar. When I started my YouTube channel in the good old days of YouTube, when YouTube actually sent signals to your subscribers that you uploaded a video, they don't do that anymore. So I slipped under the radar. I was able to do certain things. I was able to participate in the internet economy without restriction. And that's one of the reasons I made so much money. Now, if you're black, you gotta do a family channel, comedy, or some kind of, you know, um, hyper aggressive presentation. You know, like this channel. This channel doesn't grow that much does and i kind of know why and this is why that on savage finance i don't stray away from the topic of personal finance i don't talk about per social media stuff uh, i get a lot of black folks who's like hey man i want you to speak on this social issue nope because what that's going to do is jack up the algorithm on that channel because what it's going to do it's like let's say i started i did a kevin samuels video talking about Kevin Samuels on that. That's going to bring a whole bunch of folks who are not interested in personal finance to the channel. And what's going to happen is like I've been watching 
my channel like there's a, oh, another personal finance channel and I'm taking the same trajectory that he did his channel is like four or five years old first two years he did okay boom third year he blew up but he never strayed away from his core content never strayed away from it never got into this alternate stuff and he does like eighty ninety thousand dollars a month ad since now so I already know what's coming. I know how to build that channel. And I'm thinking about doing a new men's channel called Modern Gentleman because Kevin Samuels. I'm gonna give the brother credit. Kevin Samuels put out a very high level presentation, a very articulate presentation. And when that video hit World Star Hip Hop, because this is how YouTube, See, a lot of people think when you have a website, let's say someone takes your video and embeds it on this website, then people leave that website and come to YouTube. That's gonna make your channel blow up. And that's what happened when his video went to World Star and YouTube started getting all of this outside traffic to his channel. He blew up. This is how Graham Stephan kind of blew up. Graham Stephan was on Reddit in the personal finance. Sent all that Reddit traffic to YouTube and his channel took off after about two, 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 two and a half, almost three years. See, that's a, that's a little signal that you will not see in all these videos talking about how to grow on YouTube. Number one, if you can get a lot of outside traffic coming to your channel from a website, Reddit, your, ch your channel will blow up. You, you've never seen that on any of these, how to do YouTube. Like, just come up with a good thumbnail. Just come up with a good title. No. <laughs> no, that ain't how it works. Like this uh, chick that I was talking about in the personal finance space who started, who got on the stimulus videos. That has blown up literally hundreds of channels. Talking about stimulus checks, EIDL loans, PPP loans. And anytime these channels talk about something that isn't stimulus related, the videos don't do well. You wanna know why? Let me tell you why. The YouTube algorithm has found an audience for that content. And when you produce that type of content, the YouTube algorithm sends signals to the members in that audience. When you produce non-stimulus PPP content, the YouTube algorithm doesn't send them notifications. You ever see someone's channel that has lopsided content? They'll do this one video, get all these views, and they'll do something else, and they, they hardly get any views? That's why. So once again, you know, with the introduce, introduction of new ideals and you know, because I'm, I'm going to do a better job, y'all, because I want you guys to be successful. And I know that you are impatient. You want your success now. You want to be living in the million dollar house now. You want to be driving the Lambo now. And anyone that can tell you you can do that in two or three years, that's who you're going to listen to. That's who you're going to listen to. Um, one of the things, there's a lot of misinformation on YouTube and part of it is the content creator knows that this type of content is going to get views may not necessarily help you, but it's going to help that content creator. And a big part of that is people don't have a conscience. Like I stated on Savage Finance, you know, I, I'm not going to stray from my core con content. I'm not, I'm not, because uh, we've had it in my YouTube mastermind. We're talking about hot topics can blow up your channel, but I've seen people that do that. And then when they start talking about their normal content, the views don't come. Why? Well, I just tell you about the YouTube algorithm. When you find content that works for the YouTube algorithm, you cannot deviate from that content or the YouTube algorithm go slap you upside your head. Boy, 
Don't you dare put that kind of video up there. I ain't going to spread that. And this is why so many people don't do well with YouTube. And this is why so many people struggle with YouTube because they don't understand how it works. I mean, if I didn't have a conscious, I'd be sitting on a million view, million subscribers on this channel. If I just put out content that I knew activated the YouTube algorithm, but didn't really do shit for you, yeah, I would be there. Uh, AKA Graham Stephan. Cause uh, I got some videos coming up for him because a lot of people like him and they feel that he's, he's your friend, but his content will not improve your life one bit. Not one bit. And this is the thing where people are missing it because people watch Graham because he's successful, not necessarily because his content is helpful. I want you to notice that. There are many YouTubers who put out really great content helpful content and they don't have the views they don't have the views uh, there's a guy who has a stock investing channel solid he's got like 3,000 subscribers and he'd be putting out really good information but he doesn't put out information that activates the YouTube algorithm uh, Janelle and her her pet snake Alfredo van life van life I would feel is hotter than it's ever been right now due to the pandemic. But people are struggling with living in a van in the pandemic. They pocket say, hey, that's the ticket. But their mind says, mm, I don't know about that, man. I don't know about that. So you're, you're going to see. But with the conflict of new ideals and old ideals, Right now, you have people because they're getting this information, they're getting this information, but they're not deploying the information. Like this girl, she got some information and she took action. That right there makes her exceptional. You know how many people get information, good information and never take action? Never do certain things? Never actually take action? And there, there's so much information out here. It is so hard to know who to listen to and who not to listen to. And a big part of success is getting the correct information. And a big part of success is applying the information. Let's talk about me in the car business. All right. I knew that a lot of the YouTubers, I'm not going to say they were full of crap. I'm going to say that their information would be good for someone in their market. How about that? And I knew that, you know, there, there's a girl, she has all these old cars, she does really well. That wouldn't work here in Atlanta. I knew that. And more than likely, I have discovered what I'm probably going to do is move away from Turo because now I have real marketplace data. I made more money on higher car with cheaper cars. Let me say that again. I have made more money on higher car with cheaper cars. It's a different audience. It's a different renter. And with uh, Turo, people are looking for experienced cars. That's why the Porsche stayed out. And I'm probably going to sell a Porsche, sell a BMW, sell a Range Rovers, and take that money and put it into cheaper cars and put those cars on higher car. Because for every car on higher car, that's gonna be 700 to 850 per month. So I can take four cars that are not generating because the Range Rover hasn't been rented once. And this is something else that you have to look at, the car calculator on Turo. Um, the Range Rover hasn't been rented once. One of the Range Rovers I bought was a mistake. Can't go on the platform. And I can turn that $71,000 that I spent on those four cars into 12, 
maybe 15 cars and 15 like 10,000 10 cars is 7,000 so that's like $13,000 worth of revenue by making that switch from Toro to higher car not even nice cars don't even have the Bluetooth because uh, I'm gonna sell those puppies and I'm just gonna go out because right now uh, I am in a suspended animation mode because I need to get to office waiting on them to get back to me with that and I already have a good plan and I'm getting ready to start running some ads to test my hypothesis before I go to market. So we've got a lot of really good and juicy data. And I feel that this business is gonna be extremely successful. However, since I am coming from off of an internet business, because this is the beauty of an internet business. You can move really, really, really fast with the internet business. You don't have to wait for stuff. It's just like internet, build your website, build your platform, get your branding, boom, 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 boom. I gotta wait on people. I gotta wait to the state of Georgia to send me these titles. I gotta wait for the leasing company to get back to me. I gotta wait for the insurance companies to get back to me. So I'm like just sitting around waiting, waiting on other people, waiting on systems. And it's annoying as hell. Because I'm so used to just going, just going, just going, just going, just going, just going. Just taking off, just making moves, not having to wait on nobody. Just like boom, 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 boom. And this is one of the appeals of the new economy. You don't have to wait. Like, I mean, like right now, I could move to Puerto Rico. I'm not moving to Puerto Rico. Because uh, here, here's the thing. A lot of people move into Puerto Rico to save on their income tax, right? However, do you know a supercar imported to Puerto Rico is twice? The import tax is just as much as the car. See, this is one of the things that a lot of people know. Like, moving to Puerto Rico, moving to Puerto Rico. All right, you're going to save on your income tax, but your sales tax is going to knock a hole in your head. See, it's, it's these little details like this that people like, Hey, I'm moving to Puerto Rico. Now, if you move to Puerto Rico, and let's say you went to, you maintained a house in an income tax free state, like Texas or Florida. So you moved to Puerto Rico, and then you went to Florida, and you bought your cars, then you had your car shipped to Puerto Rico. That's a way to get around those import taxes. You're welcome. Hustling, hustling, hustling. So, once again, the conflict of the old economy with the new economy. And we're gonna start talking about that because uh, essentially, even though I'm getting in the car business, I'm not gonna do the car business like a typical car dealer. I'm gonna have what, like, I'm, I'm gonna model what I did in the storage yard. I'm gonna have buying profiles. I see, I, I've been shopping a lot of dealers and they just have any and everything on their lot. And um, like, like, give you an example. I'm probably gonna buy Acuras, Hondas, and Toyotas only. Why these cars have a sterling reputation for being ultra reliable. Why? The people on hire car buying these cars to make money. They need reliability. Also, I'm going to, once they, because once the car goes out, they don't want to take them, they don't want to bring them back. So instead of like doing an oil change, I'm gonna like, go here, take the car here. You have an appointment on this day for an oil change. They won't even have to come back to me. So I'm gonna do a lot of internet, new economy type stuff in this old school business model. And I'll be talking about it because I have figured out a way to get this business to a million dollars in about 18 months, which is very, very fast. To a million dollars annual revenue in about 18 months from scratch. 
from scratch. From scratch. I didn't even do that with the storage auction business. But once again, as someone gets knowledge and applies that knowledge and gets experience, these things can kind of happen because I'm seeing people talking about, hey, I made 200K on Toro in a year. In 18 months, I'm gonna be making 100K a month. 100K a month in 18 months. 18 months from July. So from July 2021 to July 2022 to December, moving into January 2023, I'll be doing six figures per month in my rental car business. 18 months. And that's why, because once again, now I have, because essentially you should never do a business plan without real numbers and real, without real marketplace data, because you're, you're just going to make some wrong decisions. And I, I went into this knowing that I was going to have to probably change everything but I wasn't going to get that data unless I got in the marketplace. But due to the fact that used car prices are going through the roof, I could buy these cars and typically resell them and lose a little money. Because I bought the cars from dealership and I had to pay dock fees and stuff. So I'm probably going to lose on that 71,000. Uh, he didn't hit me over the head with that stuff. So. I had to pay sales tax. I'm gonna lose the sales tax on that 71, but that's it. And the Acras, um, two of the Acras, same deal. One Acra, I had to pay a dock fee. Uh, I paid 15K for that one. So I'm going to lose about 2K on that car. And then once I get my dealer's license, I will not be buying from dealers. I will be buying straight from the auction. So I'll be able to do a lot more. So that's all I got for you. I want you to really think about this video because no, you don't have to work 40 years to become a millionaire. If you take the correct information, you can become a millionaire in three years to 10 years. It's possible, you can do it, but you gotta take action. So. For those of you who want to be part of some new experiences, go below, get in the art of holding. I'm getting ready to do some new stuff with that. Think you're going to like it. Think you're going to like it. So that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you in the next one.